all of us are searching, knowingly or unknowingly, for enlightenment, truth, and harmony in our lives. This program, hosted by Dr. Gregory Penn, will help you aspire to a more fulfilling and rewarding life. All right, well, let's rub the stick before All we right, get started. Before we begin, we got to rub the stick. All right, come on, everybody. We got to rub this stick. Okay. Yeah. Rub the stick. Yeah, rub it. Mama. Rub it. Okay. All right. Now, now we can, we're set. Now we can start shooting. Very good. All right. Here we are again. Our next episode. I slurred that. Slur. <laughs> What what's the problem? Hi everybody. <laughs> Hi everybody. Welcome back to this next episode of Aspire Unplugged. And today we're going to talk about giving. Mm. A very Touchy Im- subject. Very important thing. And let's start off with a clip here uh, that kind of answers the question that a student had about why is giving so threatening to my ego. Okay. Let's take a look. My willingness to give, even the way I give, the way I pay my bills. The way I free flow in giving has a lot to do with whether or not I'm in touch with my heart or my head. If I'm in touch with my heart, I will find it very easy to accept those things in life which are a much deeper mystery to me than my head would like to accept. I would be willing in my heart through my giving to surrender, almost to die to God. And that's what giving is. It's like a death. This is why so many people have a hard time with it. There are two things that make giving very difficult. The first thing is it seems threatening to the rationale of our logic and our reasoning. Because it says to us, if I give, I won't have enough for me, which is a trust issue and a deep inner issue about how we love and the way we love. And the second thing is that it brings about is where am I willing to go against how I think for how I feel? Most people are not going to go against how they think for how they feel. It's too frightening. Therefore, they initially live in a little box. The little box is a box where they live and move and have their life existence, and it doesn't much change. Nothing really changes around them. The only thing that happens to them is they live, they survive, and they die in that little box. They never have the bigger picture and the bigger experience. Hmm. He said it all. (laughs) <laughs> that young man, <laughs> here I sit, 71 years old, and I'm looking at that and thinking, wow, I, giving is a very um, intimate experience. And it is what that young man said. It's about dying. And it, it's dying into my soul, not dying physically, although I am sure it feels like that kind of death. A physical death. Um, My human body runs off of DNA. And DNA is a survival mechanism in all of us that is about self-preservation at all cost, even to my own cost. Mm -hmm. But I won't want to recognize that. I really don't. So with all that being said, I'm going against the body and my DNA. And the best people basically can do is give emotionally. Uh, that, it has to be something they believe in. Hmm. I believe in that. And, you know, I, you, you look at people giving money to political um, you know, parties. and you, you got to wonder, they've done nothing for them. They've done nothing but hurt them. They, they say all the right words and people are sitting there going, oh, yeah. But it... Well, they're trying to get something. For their giving. Right? Yeah. It's an endorsement and get what will I get back? And, you know, the old adage is true. People never learn. They don't. Hmm. Uh, how long has this country been around? 100 years, 200 years? Something? Yeah. And we still haven't. We're still the same people. Mm-hmm. We the people, you know, are, have not changed. Mm-hmm. So giving is about my, my bigger heart, not my emotional heart. And... To do that, you have to be um, extremely fearless. Mm -hmm. You can't be worried about what's going to happen to me. Mm -hmm. And one day we will all give up our bodies and there'll be no question about it. (laughs) Whether you like it or not, you're going to give it up. So I, um, I have never been able to reach people on 
that level of understanding what giving is. It's a more than money thing, mm -hmm. much more. And it affects their life from A to Z and into their next life. And it is not something you can really talk about with people. You either mature into giving through love or you don't. Mm -hmm. You just don't do it. And it's, most people it's, don't it's, do it. It can be a super freeing thing to do, though. I mean, it can be so wonderful to have that feeling of, of, of I don't need this. I'm going to give it, you know? Well, it's not even a matter of I don't need this. It's more this is what is necessary. Mm -hmm. This is... And right. I, we, we don't want to participate in life. We just want to get from life. There are mm -hmm. the getters and the givers. And there are very few givers and mostly getters. And everybody's thinking about, well, how is this going to help? People don't understand there is nothing in this world that can help us. We are destined to be a black planet one day or another just by the sheer science of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you read the science, this is going to all extinguish sooner or later, thousands of years. You know, but mm -hmm. the sun's going to burn out in thousands of years or whatever. You know, the, it, nothing, everything is based on impermanence. And you and I are just here to gather some kind of energetic from that impermanence and not cling to what we believe in, cling to the earth, cling to life. You are life. It's just not the life you and I tend to understand. Mm. Okay. Well, it's let's... inexplicable. Okay. I hate to say it. Yeah. It's one of those things you, it's a reveal, something that is revealed to you, and there is no way to make sense of it. There just is no way. There are way. words for that. No, there aren't. I mean, there really aren't. Well, let's look at another uh, clip uh, a student is asking about, well, is it selfish to want recognition when I give? So let's, <laughs> let's see what this young man had to say about it. I figure this, come take a walk with me. Life's been very good to me. It's given me an opportunity to work out my stuff. It's given me an opportunity to see myself. It's given me the opportunity for happiness. It's given me the opportunity for sadness. It's constantly giving to me. And one of the questions I have to ask myself is, what have I given back? And why have I given anything? If I give things to get, it's not giving at all. If I give things to get ahead, it's not giving at all. And if I give to be seen of other people to get their approval or their happiness, then it's not giving at all. I have a lot that I owe to life. I owe it the very best of myself. And I owe it from my feelings, not my thoughts. And if I look at my life and I say to myself, I'm not going to give up myself. I'm going to hold myself back. I'm going to try as a person to hold back and conserve for myself and keep some for me, I'll miss the opportunity of what life is trying to say to me. Because life is a great big let go. That young man <laughs> knew things. Pretty he amazing. Did. Pretty amazing, huh? Yeah. All, I, the, I, all who these was years. That? Who was that mass man? <laughs> he should get a TV show. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that just further illustrates what you were just saying. And, yeah, and, I, it, it does. It, uh, well, I know in your personal life that you have a methodology by which you give back. <laughs> and, uh, you know, working with kids, elderly, people that are sick. I mean, why, why Batman? Oh, the Batman. Well, he does something that... I don't think many people do. And I, I, when I was a kid, I, I loved Batman. I, I, I thought he was wonderful, and I'll tell you one reason why. He was immensely wealthy and extremely generous. And he didn't want anybody to know who he was while he was fighting crime, which is a metaphor. Mm -hmm. And I love that. It's, you know, the whole idea of Doing every you using your resources to do everything you can um, to help people, but you know when you're a little boy, and I'm still a little boy inside, even though I'm this old, um, I still want, you know, I I still want to be a hero. 
inside, deep inside. <laughs> and But I don't want anybody to know who I am. Right. And so the, they got the mask, the cowl. Oh, I love it. I just love and, the whole thing. And so thing. that's giving without looking for recognition. Re rest, right. Exactly. He doesn't want anybody to know. And he uses his wealth to help other people. Mm -hmm. He's anonymous. And um, in my so Batmo project, see these kids. Yeah. I, I love my, my kids. And you would be surprised. There we are at, at a at an event. You would be surprised as to how kids respond to Batman. Oh yeah, look at them. They're just you can I mean, tell they're beaming. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're just they're wonderful and a they they can attach to the the image of a Batman, mm -hmm. you know. And they know he won't hurt them. Yeah. So he'll protect them and I, I, I think that's very valuable. But yeah, I do a lot of that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And and you do like make a wish and stuff like that? We do we do things for various charities for children, mm -hmm. but we also do things for the homeless. Mm -hmm. And um, I get I supply uh, clothing uh, for uh, the kids who. It's heartbreaking. It just, you know, there was never a time in my life when I was a kid where I had to worry about do I have jeans, a t-shirt, and tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. These kids don't have, and I had a coat. Mm. And I remember my father looking at me. They were divorced, my mother and father. And I remember him looking at me one day and saying, do you need a coat? Now, I had coats, but it touched me so deeply that he cared. Do you have a coat? So I've kept that in my heart. And um, I go out anonymously and um, make sure that all the kids have coats, socks, underwear, T-shirts, regular shirts, and jeans. You know what? I remember uh, in India, you bought me a coat. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and I was very, very touched by that. Yeah. It was wonderful. Yeah. Remember when we were in India and uh, we were given the mangoes? Yeah, check it out. Here's a, some clips from that. Oh, really? Um, yeah. And these people yeah, were, were so desperate. They needed this stuff, no matter how small. It made such a huge difference to them in yeah. that moment at, in time. And uh, talk to me about what your recollections of this are. Well, that, that was a big event. See that man right there behind me? Mm -hmm. He was in the ashram with me in India. And he found me there. Oh. And how in the heck he recognized me, I didn't. I don't really know. But this, it, when you're giving to people like this, you're giving more than fruit. And he was trying to make sure that, I, you know, the people who didn't uh, get any get some. Mm -hmm. And we, I, I, this was one of the most amazing parts of our journey when we were there was being able to honor that, those people. Absolutely. I did not... I did not get off on that. I don't get off on giving. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have learned there is no one here to interrupt the process of me giving to someone. I don't want to interrupt it with Greg. Mm -hmm. I want it to be a pure flow. And so I never thought about what I was doing and I never felt anything about what I was doing. I was the doing. And that's what you see that I was very focused on just doing that mm -hmm. and not being Gregory at You're all. You're a conduit. Yeah, I'm just a conduit. And um, the, 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 you know, it is the fruit wasn't going to save their life or anything like that. But what was in the fruit would have saved their life, if you know what I mean. Because the fruit it. is your, in, in, yes. in, it's imbued with love yes. and the free flow of the universe, yeah. essentially. Yeah, all they saw was a white man with red yeah. hair giving them fruit. There was one woman who took my hand when I gave her the fruit. And she and I had an exchange. Oh, yeah. And I think she knew. Mm -hmm. And I knew. And, and that touched me very deeply. I'm, I'm reminded of uh, generosity and humility of being the key to awakening from yes. like, the Beatitudes, right? Yes. Uh, blessed and, are the poor in spirit, right? Right. And uh, that that means not an arrogant, haughty person, right? And and if I'm aware of my giving, I'm not giving. 
Mm -hmm. I have to be unaware of my giving. Like right now, I don't know who's watching this. Well, some people get it. Some people will. Other people will criticize it. Um, some people only look how old I am now compared to them. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't matter to me. But it's here for, for the people that yes. need it. And they'll drink from the water or exactly. not drink from the water. Exactly true. Exactly true. All right. Well, this has been a good show. Thank you very much. I love that was name. awesome. I mean, to see that the message really hasn't changed in all these years. Looking back, that's what my place. students say. You haven't changed. Yeah. And I, and I go, well, you know, when you know, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> all right. Well, that's enough for this episode. We'll see you on the next one coming up real coming soon. Coming up soon.